Welcome to the NFL Week 15 Sunday Slate Breakdown. We're bringing you coverage of all Sunday games leading up to Sunday Night Football. I'm your host, Jacob Wayne, joined as always by Cody Malstrom and Will Schwartz. Let's move on. We've got the Atlanta Falcons at the Carolina Panthers. Schwartz, you've become a bit of a Panthers expert. Uh, I think you've <laughs> you've covered them like every single week with a matchup preview on our site. So I'm going to let you lead us off here. How are you feeling about the Panthers and any lean in this game for you? It's getting a little crazy. Me, I, I'm on lineups.com covering the Panthers. I'm like the Mike Evans scoring touchdowns of covering the Panthers. It happens once every single week. But uh, I am going to fade the Panthers because that's the only possible way you can treat the Panthers when they're playing an okay team and they're given a, a three-point spread. I know they're at home, but I just I can't. I can't talk about this too many times. I can't talk about this any more times. The Panthers are one of the worst teams ever. They're not even tanking, and they have a two-game lead on the first overall pick. Thank you for that, by the way, Caroline. I'm excited to see what Ryan Poles does with it, if he can do another trade-down shakedown. But I digress. I think this number makes absolutely no sense. I grabbed the Falcons at minus, number th- at minus three. The Panthers are almost dead last in literally every single category. We have that spreadsheet. It's all red, DVOA, EPA, pass, run, Everything except pass defense, which itself is trending down. It was around average. Now it's getting into the 20s. J.C. Horn being back is nice. Jeremy Chin is still doing literally nothing. I think this is the week we finally get a big Bijan game. The Panthers run defense is 31st or 32nd in literally every metric that I could get after. And I spent five minutes looking for different metrics to try and find them outside of the 30s. Meanwhile, the Falcons' run defense is top 10 by most metrics. Uh, Wayne, you share these statistics with me. The Panthers have been stubbornly running the football even when it is not the right way to you know, run the game script. It's just how they've been approaching football the last couple of weeks, maybe trying to protect Bryce, trying to shift the load off of his shoulders. If they're going to do that stubbornly, it's not going to work. And if they switch it to Bryce shouldering the load, it's also not going to work because he's just not there uh, with the offensive line and weapons they've given him. So... I don't see how the Falcons win by less than a field goal. I would be really, really disappointed in Arthur Smith, like more than my usual level of disappointed in Arthur Smith if they're not able to win this one by at least a field goal. I don't mind that look, Schwartz. I, I'm not gonna lay, I'm not gonna lay any sort of points with Desmond Ritter on the road, though. Gonna be hard for me to do. He's a far, far worse quarterback on the road. Not that he's that great at home either, but on the road, his passer rating drops from 89 to 75 yards per attempt from 7.6 to six. And completion percentage drops by almost 7%. So on the roadie is worse. And we're looking at the Falcons going into a weather game. Uh, Going to be wind and rain here. I like the under. Um, the Panthers, I don't need to tell you that their offense is incompetent. You, if you watch the NFL, you know that. Um, on the Falcons side, though, potentially out four starters on the offensive line. There was a point in the game last week when they were down Caleb McGarry, Jake Matthews, Chris Lindstrom, and Drew Dahlman. They're all, also, all listed as questionable here, but you're asking Desmond Ritter to go on the road, a place he struggles without potentially multiple offensive line starters against a defense that's improving in health. I think this is an under all the way. Um, I talked about it previously this year, actually in a Falcons game. I took the under against the Jets. It's a similar situation here for me. Totals of 37 or fewer over the last decade are 30 and 12 to the under. So typically with these low totals, you can go under if the circumstances are correct for it, and I think they are here. Um, the Panthers' defense is getting healthier. I think you can get J.C. Horn covering Drake London. Solid defensive line for Carolina as well. So give me the under here. I could easily see it being like 10-3 Falcons, to be honest with you. Uh, Cody, what do you got in this game? Nothing. Uh, not touching this one with a 10-foot pole. This Falcons team has been just the most head-scratching most annoying painful team to watch possible i can't stand arthur smith he is by far in my bottom three coaches right now just wasting talent away and this panthers team um they have some bright spots but the issue is just the lows are so incredibly low i do lean towards the under um i would i would like if the falcons dipped back down or maybe if we got some panthers steam or something but yeah, it's just there's, there's, there's nothing for me. I can't build a case for just really any sort of way possible. Fair enough. That'll do it for us. Should be an awesome Sunday slate of NFL football here. Hope this Cowboys Bills game lives up to the hype. Check out our Sunday night football coverage as well. Great game over there between the Ravens and Jaguars. We'll have game picks and player props for that one. Please like and subscribe to get notified when all of our videos come up. 
We're going to have a lot more content for you guys throughout the rest of the year and leading into the playoffs all the way up to the Super Bowl. So can't wait for all of that. Hope you guys have fun on Sunday and we will catch you on the next one.